Good morning all. I'm just getting some LEDs. I want uh, a red one and a yellow one and a green one and I also want a blue one. Good, one of each. Right, I'm just going to solder a wire onto the legs of these four LEDs. It's not very well held together but it's probably good enough. Blue, yellow, red, and green. Everything's a bit tarnished, so it's not soldering very well. Right, just clip these uh, wires off so that it's nice and neat. My little array of four LEDs all wired in parallel. Question is, how am I going to light these up? And uh, the answer is with this little uh, B3603 power supply, which can control both voltage and current. Uh, the only problem is I didn't really think this through very well, and I've now got the uh, positive and negative sides the wrong way round. So I'm going to have to sort of bend these and cross them over. Stupid. So there we go, uh, four LEDs, red, yellow, green and blue, all in parallel. Um, now if you're thinking, why am I doing this? Well, if Charlie Dimmock can do it, so can I. So uh, I was in the pound shop and I saw this multicolored solar light bulb. Now my first thought was it'll have those color changing LEDs in it and it'll swirl through uh, various color patterns. This incidentally is the Charlie Dimmock endorsement. But uh, actually, no, that's not how this works at all. Let me unscrew that and uh, switch this thing on. So that's on. And then if I block light uh, from getting to the solar panel, which is on the top there, little tiny square amorphous solar panel, uh, the LEDs come on and there's a red, a blue, a yellow and a green one. I'll just lower the blinds. And uh, you can see quite clearly that these things <laughs> stop are all in parallel there are only two wires now this looks like just uh, silver wire but it's actually enamel coated so you can touch these wire together and it doesn't short two wires coming out of uh, this unit so there's obviously a little uh, battery in there, maybe a step up uh, regulator to get the well it's going to be about three three point three volts needed to light up the blue LED and possibly the green but what about the red and the yellow they don't actually look very bright but these four LEDs are most definitely all in parallel. So let's try my one. So let's plug uh, 12 volts, actually 13.8 because we've got a bit of sun today, into this power supply and see what happens. And it's a bit naughty because this thing comes on with the output switched off. But you'll notice when I plug it in, those four LEDs briefly flash. So it's a little bit naughty. This puts uh, something out before it uh, deactivates the output. Okay, I've set it for four volts. You can see the dot is next to my handwritten V there. So four volts and I've set it for 0.1 amps. That's 100 milliamps. Now that sound might sound like quite a lot, but there are four LEDs here all in parallel. So that's only 25 milliamps each. That's about uh, the highest you'd probably want to drive these things. So 25 milliamps per LED four volts to make sure we've got enough voltage for uh, the blue one because that has a um, forward voltage of around three point something and I'm expecting that this will go into current limit so let's switch on and yes it does go into current limit what have we got we've got two volts well that's not unexpected because um, these LEDs the red the yellow and the green do have a forward voltage of about two volts. Uh, current is amps, yes that's about 100 milliamps, yeah that's what I set as my current limit. Um, but the blue one is not on, let's get in a bit closer. Um, yeah we can see definitely that the red, the yellow and the green are all on. You can't make out that green very well, perhaps I'll um, reduce the current a bit. Are we on current now? Yeah we are, so if I'll take that down to uh, 30 milliamps. Let's keep going down just so that we can see these colors a bit better. Yeah, so there's red, yellow, and green. Right, so let's go back up to 
100 milliamps uh, or a little bit above. Now the voltage across the output there is only two volts. Now can we push that voltage up uh, by putting more current through these three LEDs in order to get enough voltage to light the blue one up? Well, let's try it. Uh, I want to go back to current, so 110 milliamps. Let's go up to about 200 milliamps. We're still nothing there on the blue. Now we've got about hmm, 60 something milliamps going through each LED. Let's go a bit further. Let's go to about 300 milliamps. Yeah, still really not seeing anything on that blue LED. And that's not surprising because the voltage hasn't really gone up at all. Um, we've got 100 milliamps going through each of those three red, um, yellow, ooh, which has gone distinctly orange now. Uh, it's hard to capture that on camera, but yeah, that's gone very orange. And green, which has gone, well, quite yellow. So they're not enjoying having this amount of current put through them. But uh, no, I can't get the voltage on the output, 1.95 now, anywhere near high enough to light up the blue one. So going back to Charlie Dimmock's set of lights, how has she managed to get these four LEDs, the red, the blue, the yellow, and the green, to all light up when they're connected in parallel? There must be a bit of trickery going on here. One thing I'd like to know actually is the voltage um, across these LEDs. Now there is a little bit of wire on the end there, but I'd have to scrape that. I think actually probably, and it'll be much more fun, I should take this little module out and see if I can um, clip my DVM onto the PCB. So two screws holding this little module in and is oh yes that's coming out. And there it is. Oh what's that thing? What is that thing with four legs? That's fascinating. Um, there's a battery there I think that's wrapped up in tape. Yeah what's that thing with four legs? Is that some sort of do you know, I honestly don't know what that is. Um, looks like there's a classic inductor, that greenish thing on the underside of the board. I'm gonna have to take that board off, I think, and uh, investigate a bit more closely. Well, let's look at this battery. Uh, that's a nickel metal hydride, 1.2 uh, volts, 40 milliamp hours. And there's a few other bits and pieces there. Does that say four milliamps? Uh, 40, oh, that's probably the charge instructions. Uh, charge at four milliamps for 14 hours, probably something like that. So this four-legged device, very interesting, is a 5252F. Can we see that? 5252F. What's a 5252F four-legged transistor? So here we are, uh, running three volt devices from 1.2 volt batteries. Uh, this is a little chip, a little integrated circuit, four pin. Uh, we've got the solar cell here between pin one and ground, which is pin three. Battery here between uh, pin two and ground, which is pin three. Can you see that? Um, and then there's the output. There's a little inductor here, 330 micro henrys. That's a strange micro symbol. Well, maybe it's not. Uh, that goes to LEDs in parallel. So that's what it is. It's a special purpose uh, sort of garden solar light chip, uh, especially for this kind of thing. But that doesn't answer the question about LEDs in parallel. Right, let's check the uh, voltage across these two wires, which is what the LEDs are receiving. And that is 1.2 volts. That doesn't make sense, that can't be true. In fact, what's probably going on there is that this is some sort of um, not very good DC. It's That's probably the meter giving me kind of an average reading of something that's probably looks a bit like a sawtooth waveform or something like that. Um, but we'd need far more than 1.2 volts. That looks like it's the uh, voltage across the battery, but it's definitely not. That's definitely the two wires you can see them uh, coming up through the hole and I'm measuring across them so I think I'm gonna have to put the scope on that how annoying is that yeah I don't think 1.2 volts would be enough to light those four LEDs so if we look at this uh, table this is from the Wikipedia article on uh, just the light emitting diode and it's a table of all the different 
colors with their voltage drops and the materials, the semiconductor materials used to make those LEDs up. So if we take a look at blue, um, we're between about two and a half volts and 3.7. Uh, I think blue is generally speaking the ingan, the uh, indium gallium nitride. You can also get uh, green in indium gallium nitride, which is the called the pure green. So this green is probably a pure green. Uh, similar sort of, well, they've put a wider voltage range there, but a similar voltage uh, for the pure green as the blue. Um, the yellow, though, and the red, yellow they've got 2.1 to 2.18 so about 2.2 and red 1.63 to 2.03 they've got no reds in indium gallium nitride so there are no nitride reds and uh, there are no nitride yellows the reds and yellows are all uh, phosphides or arsenides um yes i mean the dvm was definitely giving me an average because actually this is only on half the time but even so i'm still quite surprised at the low voltage there i'm at one volt per division and we're only seeing a one two well about 2.8 volts or something like that i would have thought that would have been a little bit higher so these leds obviously aren't being dri being driven very hard um still doesn't really explain though why the red and the yellow are lit not very bright as you can see the green is by far the brightest um, when they're in parallel with the green and the blue. Let's have a closer look at the red and the yellow. Uh, right, so let's turn this thing off and uh, get in really close on those LEDs. Um, double magnifying glass, I think. Right, the end one, uh, the green one, this is. You can see uh, the dye there, and I think you can just about see the bond wire. So that's that one. What's the next one down? Uh, okay, this is the yellow one. Ah, now that's different. That one appears to have a large block of yellow phosphor on top of the LED. You certainly can't see um, either the dye or the bond wire. Let's go to the next one, which is blue. Ah, okay, that one looks like a regular LED. Yes, we can definitely see the dye there. Uh, can't quite see the bond wire, but you can actually see some sort of printed tracks on that one. And uh, let's take a look at the red one, which is there. Ah, right, that one is very definitely red. And again, has a sort of big blob of uh, phosphor material on top of the LED. We certainly can't see any of the features of the LED, like the trackings or the dye or the bond wire. So that one looks like it's just a big blob of phosphor on top of what could potentially be, I don't know, blue, ultraviolet, green even. Um, so yeah, the yellow and red LEDs are special ones that have big blobs of phosphor on top of them. So there it is. I, I assume all these LEDs are nitride types. Um, there's blue, it's reasonably bright. The green is phenomenally bright. Uh, that's that's really bright. The yellow is quite dim, but then I presume that's because um, the light is being uh, put through that uh, phosphor. And it's also, as it goes through the phosphor, it's having its um, color changed. Now there is a, a name for the effect that uh, changes the color of light from what could underneath be blue or green or possibly ultraviolet and red is very dim now i assume that's because the, to produce red light from an underlying ultraviolet or blue requires a lot of um, shifting of the frequency to um, actually uh, make it this color and as as a result we're we're not seeing much light coming out of that led at all yeah, so here it is from that same Wikipedia article. We've got uh, phosphor-based LEDs. Now, this is generally speaking done to turn blue LEDs into white LEDs using a yellow phosphor. And it talks about this uh, Stokes shift. So you've got spectrum of a white LED showing blue light. I can't see that. Uh, directly emitted by a gallium nitride-based LED, uh, peaking at 465 nanometers. So that's blue. 
and the more broadband Stokes shifted light emitted by the what's this YAG phosphorus that's a sort of yellow phosphor which is um, then resulting in light between 500 and 700 nanometers which is uh, a sort of broad spectrum white but there's the blue peak at the um, lower wavelength and uh, here's the additional light emitted by the phosphor giving this broad spectrum white. So there we are. Uh, Charlie Dimmock is a super clever lady because she's managed to find four LEDs, uh, red, yellow, green and blue, that all light up um, when you put them across the same voltage. I wasn't able to do that. I can only light up the red, the yellow and the green. The blue doesn't light up at all. Um, but she's cheated a little bit by using uh, yellow and red LEDs which have big blocks of coloured phosphor on them. Anyway, that solved the mystery of the uh, four different colour LEDs all in parallel. Um, I'm going to go and hang this up outside now and uh, get some sun on that solar panel. Cheerio.